Our greatest limitation as men is not the devil. Our greatest limitation as men is not the environment we live in. Yes, these things can pose some level of impedance and impediment. But our greatest limitation is the operation of the flesh. You see, for the flesh wrestles against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and the two is one against the other. That is an ancient war. The job of the flesh is to, def is to defy the potentials and the possibility of the spirit. And so the reason the spirit can be full of potential, even in the equivalence of the Christ, yet not manifest, is because the flesh were encumbered. It's the job of flesh to diffuse the potential of spirits, or of the spirit. And so when we begin to pray, one thing prayer is engineered to achieve is to decimate the flesh. Is to steal the flesh. This is why when a man begins to pray, he will notice that the flesh will begin to wrestle him. Distractions begin to come. Time suddenly becomes elongated. Five minutes is like two hours. The reason is that prayer attacks the power of flesh. And so that reaction is just like setting fire in the hole where there's a snake. The, the snake will jump out and try to. That's what flesh is doing. The flesh was masquerading, hiding and, 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 and oppressing your possibilities. Now that prayer has come, prayer has a way of revealing everywhere flesh has strength. And so when a man begins to pray, he's launching an assault on the flesh. And if he understands the technology going on and he doesn't stop, after a while, flesh will give way. And so when flesh gives way, what happens is that transformation and transfiguration takes place. Because transformation, you know, the flesh is not your body. It's the human nature, the fallen nature. And the fallen nature is weaved into the soul of a man. Are we together? So, when you begin to pray, what happens is that transformation, light, begins to come to you to renew you. Some of the scriptures you read that didn't make much sense to you, as you start praying, God will take one word or one verse and he begins to open it. So, the light component of that scripture is now shared on you. It's that light now that will renew the mind. Many think it's just by reading Bible that the mind is renewed. When you read Bible, you store the word in your soul. It's when you meditate or you pray that the scriptures open. Meditation is to talk what you have read to yourself. You keep talking it. As you are talking it, what is happening is that you are trying to align with frequency. Frequency simulations are taking place until resonance happens. It's just the way Joshua was walking around Jericho until on the seventh day, alignment was achieved and they blasted and the wall sank. So when you are meditating and you are talking scriptures to yourself because the word is Hagar, you are trying to align frequencies. When resonance takes place, that word, the frequency of that word becomes the frequency with which the Holy Ghost spoke it. Then light breaks into your soul. Or when you are in the place of prayer, the Holy Ghost himself will come. That's why he said the Holy Ghost helped our infirmities. Romans 8.26 For we know not what to pray for as we ought to. How, how be it the Spirit helped and what it shows there is that the spirit begins to reveal to us. Because that kind of help is to bring you access to light, to truth in their authentic state. But if you don't pray, you will have logos in your head that will not translate to anything. Do you know that when you overstock fire with wood, the fire will quench? There must be a balance between wood and fire in order to produce heat to cook. So while you are reading, you must also engage prayer. And so when you begin to engage prayer, prayer has the potential of transformation and transfiguration. In Matthew 17, verse 2 and 3, he said, even Jesus, as he prayed, he said the fashion of his countenance was altered. His raiment began to glister. This is what Paul was teaching in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, from verse 1 and 2. He said, we have a tabernacle that is in heaven. Our glory is like a vest, a garment. He says it's in heaven. He said, but the way we put it on is to travel. When we start praying, when we start praying, when we start praying, he says something happens to us. That tabernacle begins to clothe us. And when that tabernacle clothes you, it kills the potentials of flesh. And so when you find people who don't pray, they can even use the word of God to defraud. They can use the word of God to swindle people. 
But when you pray, you engage the spirit that brought that word. And when you engage that spirit, the energy that comes from the realm of that spirit will alter you, even your molecular structure. In Isaiah chapter 6 from verse 1, he said, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. He had words. He was speaking words. But for the first time, he encountered the spirit that originated that word. And immediately, nobody spoke to him. He said, I'm a man of unclean lips. I dwell among a people of unclean lips. Woe unto me. And the Bible said, one of the angels that went, but was moving took of the coals that was in the midst of the fire and touched his tongue and said, your iniquity has passed. When men don't pray, there will be wolves in sheep clothing. Using the word of God to steal, to cheat and to manipulate people. They will burn scripture in order to satisfy their ambition and appetite. This is why we have criminals today standing on the altar, wearing ties, no integrity, liars, stealing from innocent and gullible people. You are calling for partnership, but there's no kingdom assignment that you are doing. Visibly, what is the money for? It's for rich watches, iPhones and cars. It's for holidays in nations, Bahamas. And the kingdom suffers. Because there's no prayer. When a man begins to die, prayer will stop. The first sign that a man's spirit is under attack is that he won't pray anymore. And the first sign that a man's spirit is healthy is that prayer will begin. Because one of the things that your spirit loves to do naturally is to pray. You may not have backslidden to the point of sinning. If you are not praying now, you are under attack. That's what I'm saying. Because if you are healthy, you will want to talk to God. You will, not, you will want to participate there. The word will be bubbling out of your spirit. You want to know how witnesses become lecturers. Having no power. Having nothing to show to their generation. It's when the altar of prayer dies. They are full of language, but nothing to show. The walls can't convict. And the walls don't carry the weight of glory to do what the glory was designed to do. And so when men pray, the second thing that happens to them is that transformation will begin to take place. Did you read the Bible? He said, when you carry your offering to the altar, and, you have, and your brother has an altar against you. He didn't say you have an altar against your brother. He said, your brother has an altar against you. He said, leave that offering. He said, go and make peace. When you come to the altar, the emphasis is purging. The emphasis is transformation. And the emphasis is transfiguration. You can't pray and pray consistently and not have the Holy Ghost begin to purge you or to refine you. Paul speaking, he said, for this cause I pray. Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 17. That the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So you cannot have the knowledge of him except you pray. Because that kind of knowledge is granted. He may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That the eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know. That is the knowledge that liberates. That is the knowledge that changes. That's the knowledge that transfigures and transforms. It comes when men pray. He said, for this cause, I bow down my knees and pray. Even the nature of God that we wear is activated and intensified when we begin to pray. Because in Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 15, Paul spoke about prayer. I pray to the, the Father and our God and Father of the family in heaven and on earth. Why? That he may open you up to the potentials and the propensities of love that you may know the height, the depth, the width and the breadth of the love of God. Even that love that passes knowledge. So you can't enter the fullness of the nature and the essence of God except as prayer comes in. Either somebody prays for you or you engage that prayer yourself. In Colossians 4.12, he said, Epaphras is one of you, a born servant of Christ, laboring fervently for you in prayers that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. Transfiguration, transformation, perfection in the presence and in the things of the Spirit comes when men begin to pray. Music